This is part three of a series on support vector machine. In this video, we will look at the basic algorithm for the linear soft margin SVM. This video was produced in Korean and translated into English. My voice is AI generated text to speech. In the last video, we looked at the basic algorithm for the linear hard margin SVM and implemented it using the CVXOP library. In this and the next video, we will look at the linear soft margin SVM. The linear hard margin SVM was only possible if a straight line could completely separate the two data clusters without any misclassification. When the linear hard margin SVM cannot completely separate two clusters, the linear soft margin SVM is used. When classes positive 1 and negative 1 are mixed and cannot be completely separated linearly, they can be linearly separated by allowing for some misclassifications. In the figure below, this data point and this data point are mixed with the red data points. In this case, a straight line cannot perfectly separate the two data clusters. However, allowing for some misclassification, this line can roughly separate the two clusters. This is called the linear soft margin SVM. To allow for misclassification, we assign a slack variable zeta to each data point. Our goal is to find a decision boundary that maximizes the margin while minimizing the misclassifications. In the figure below, a zeta is assigned to each data point like this. The red straight line is the decision boundary, and the dotted lines are the positive and negative boundaries. The equation of the decision boundary is wx plus b equals zero. And the equation of the positive boundary is wx plus b equals one. And the equation of the negative boundary is wx plus b equals negative one. The first data point x1 is above the positive boundary, so the value of wx1 plus b is greater than one. x2 is also above the positive boundary, so this value is also greater than 1. Since x3 lies between the positive boundary and the decision boundary, the value of wx3 plus b is between 0 and 1. Since x4 is also between these boundaries, this value is also between 0 and 1. Since x5 is below the negative boundary, the value of wx5 plus b is less than negative 1. x6 lies between the decision boundary and the negative boundary, so this value is between negative 1 and 0. Now let's define the slack variable, zeta. Let's add a zeta i to the hard margin constraints as follows. Because a zeta is added to each data point, there may be multiple positive and negative boundaries. For the data points where y is positive 1, we can shift the positive boundary down by negative zeta. For example, for misclassified data point x6, we shift the positive boundary down by zeta 6 like this. then even the misclassified x6 can satisfy this constraint. For the data points where y is negative 1, we can shift the negative boundary up by positive zeta. For example, for misclassified data point x2, we shift the negative boundary up by zeta 2 like this. Then the x2 can also satisfy this constraint. For correctly classified data point, the zeta is zero, so the positive and negative boundaries do not shift. We'll see why the zeta is zero in a moment. 
these two inequalities can be expressed as one like this. If y is positive 1, it becomes the inequality above. And if y is negative 1, it becomes the inequality below. Then the zeta is greater than or equal to this value. And since the zeta is defined as non-negative, it can be defined as follows. Now let's check the zeta value of each data point. For the data point x1, this sign is negative because y is positive 1. And this value is greater than 1. So the zeta 1 is 0. For x2, this sign is positive because y is negative 1. And this value is greater than 1. So zeta 2 is greater than 2. For x3, this sign is positive. And this value is between 0 and 1. So zeta 3 is between 1 and 2. For x4, this sign is negative. And this value is between 0 and 1. So zeta 4 is between 0 and 1. For x5, this sign is positive, and this value is less than negative 1. So zeta 5 is 0. For x6, this sign is negative, and this value is between negative 1 and 0. So zeta 6 is between 1 and 2. The zeta values of correctly classified data points x1, x4, and x5 are 0 or between 0 and 1. The zeta values of misclassified data points x2, x3, and x6 are all greater than or equal to 1. The data point x2 is misclassified and has a large zeta because it is far from the decision boundary. We can see that the zeta increases as misclassified data point move away from the decision boundary. The data point x4 is classified correctly, but lies between the positive and decision boundaries. In this case, the zeta is between 0 and 1. Therefore, zeta can be considered a measure of misclassification. Next, let's define the objective function for linear soft margin SVM. Again, the soft margin SVM is a method that allows for some misclassifications. Therefore, the two objective functions must be considered together. The first is to maximize the margin, and the second is to minimize the misclassification error. These two goals are a trade-off and must be balanced properly. The first goal is to maximize the margin or minimize this value. The second goal is to minimize the sum of zeta, the measure of the misclassification error. This is a hinge loss, and we will look at it on the next page. Combine these two objectives into one as follows. Here, C is a type of weight applied to the second goal and is a hyperparameter. This is the objective function for the linear soft margin SVM. If C is small, the margin will be larger, even though the error will be larger. Conversely, if C is large, the margin will be smaller, even though the error will be smaller. And K is usually 1 or 2. When K is 1, it's a hinge loss. And when K is 2, it's a squared hinge loss. The first term is the loss, and the second term can be viewed as a regularization or penalty term. 
Conversely, the second term is the loss, that is the hinge loss, and the first term can be viewed as a regularization term, L2 or ridge. Let's take a look at the classification results. The decision boundary and the positive and negative boundaries when zeta is zero are like this. The data points between the positive and negative boundaries are support vectors. And these numbers represent the zeta, the slack variable. All correctly classified data points that fall outside the positive and negative boundaries have zeta of zero. This data point is misclassified and has a zeta greater than two. And the zeta of the support vectors are all greater than zero and less than two. The figure on the left is the result when C is set to 50. The total zeta is 6.37, and the margin D is about this size. The figure on the right is the result when C is set to 5.0, and the total zeta is 7.07. .07. This is larger than the total zeta on the left, and the margin D is bigger than the left result. You can see that as C increases, the error decreases, but the margin D also gets smaller. We can't say which of these two is better. As you change C, you need to cross-validate to determine which C performs best. Next, let's look at the hinge loss. Again, the slack variable zeta can be considered an error. This equation is the decision function, and this equation is the definition of zeta. This part is y hat, so we can write this equation like this. If y is positive 1, this expression can be written like this. Since 1 is y, this expression can be written like this. This expression represents a typical error because it is the difference between the actual y value and the predicted y value. If y is negative 1, it can be written like this, which also means an error. Therefore, the zeta can be considered an error, and the zeta is always non-negative. And a correctly classified data point will have a zeta of 0. The zeta of positive data sample above the positive boundary is zero. However, the positive data samples below the negative boundary has the zeta greater than two. The further away it is from the boundary, the larger the zeta becomes. This can be expressed graphically as follows. Errors of this nature are called the hinge losses. You can also use the squared hinge loss. This characteristic is shown as a red curve. For reference, the graph of quadratic loss such as MSE used in regression is as follows. The error increases as it goes further left or right from the boundary. The typical form of the hinge loss is something like this, and the zeta is one of them. Next, let's look at the optimization problem for the objective function. The objective function is like this. And the constraints are as follows. And the Lagrange primal function for this problem is as follows. The lambda and mu are Lagrangian multipliers and are both non-negative. If we differentiate this function with respect to w, b, and zeta, as we did in the hard margin SVM, we get the following results. C minus lambda minus mu equals zero. So lambda is C minus mu, and lambda and mu are non-negative. So the range of lambda is like this. This is a new constraint added to the soft margin SVM.
Next, let's look at the Lagrange dual function. By substituting this for w in the primal function, as we did in the hard margin SVM, we can obtain a dual function as follows. Here this part is zero, and this part is also zero. So the final expression of the dual function is as follows. This is exactly the same as the dual function of the hard margin SVM. Only the constraints change this way. Now we can solve this problem with QP and find the lambda to create a decision function. Next, let's create a decision function. Find W with the lambda obtained from the dual function. Then find B using the support vectors. All the data points between the positive and negative boundaries are support vectors. The X plus samples satisfy this inequality. And the X minus samples satisfy this inequality. Among the X plus support vectors, this data point has the largest WX. And among the X minus support vectors, this data point has the smallest WX. Using these two data points, we calculate B using this formula. This is similar to calculating B in the hard margin SVM. Now that W and B are determined, we can create the decision function as follows. This function allows you to predict the class of the test data. The prediction method is exactly the same as for the hard margin SVM. So far, we have looked at the basic algorithm of the soft margin SVM. In the next video, we will implement this using CVXOPT and scikit-learn's SVC and linear SVC.